There are more than 400,000 NCAA student athletes. NCAA on campus is their story. Hi everyone, I'm Kat Anderson and thanks for joining us for NCAA On Campus, a look at some of the many outstanding student athletes competing in NCAA sports. And boy does outstanding describe the young man and his family that we met at the University of Illinois Chicago. Here to introduce us to him from the Windy City is UIC baseball player Nick Addison. Thanks Kat, welcome to the UIC, home of the Flames. We derive our nickname from the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. That fire destroyed four square miles of the city. From the ashes arose one of the world's great cities. The University of Illinois at Chicago is the largest university in the city. Over 27,000 students, about 17,000 undergrads. And all of us within a 15 minute walk to downtown Chicago. What a great place to go to college. NCAA on campus is here today to meet basketball player Paul Carter. Paul played the past two seasons for the University of Minnesota in the Big Ten and helped the Golden Gophers earn two trips to the NCAA tournament. He was center stage in college basketball, but this season Paul asked for it was granted an NCAA waiver to transfer. He chose to finish his college career at UIC on a smaller stage, but Paul had a big reason to come home. My younger sister Bria is 14 years old was diagnosed with uh, osteosarcoma, a bone cancer, about a year ago. When I heard I had cancer, I was very afraid. I can't begin to describe um, the initial emotions that I went through. You know, I'd ask my dad, because I remember she went to the doctor and they, asked, like, they did a little analysis on her leg. And I was like, you know how she's doing? I figured it was nothing, but he told me, you know, that she had cancer and um, that they're going to have to start chemo soon. And it, it was the toughest news I had to take probably in my life. It was four of us, four Carter kids. and. Uh, with Bria and I, um, I don't know, there's just a connection. While Bria underwent her chemo treatments in Chicago, that connection with Paul, 400 miles away, remained just as strong. There's a lot of things I don't really remember due to the chemo, but I do remember him being on the computer screen when I woke up and being there and just watching me. My family told me all the time he was watching me sleep. It was kind of funny because with the medication, it'd be it would be instant. She'd be talking and she'd just fall asleep. And so I'm like, all right, she's asleep again. So, you know, I'd kind of watch her and, you know, then she'd wake up and start talking again, same sentence. I'm like, oh, wow, that's weird. Paul finished his junior year at Minnesota, and though he loved the Golden Gophers, his love of family was even deeper. He talked with his coach, Tubby Smith. Coach Smith is a coach. He's going to look out for you no matter what. And he definitely was worried about me as a, as a young man and wanted to make sure I was making the right decisions. I felt like, you know, coming back home, you know, I was priority number one. And uh, my family needed anything from me, I'm willing to give it. Paul decided to transfer to the University of Illinois Chicago, a smaller school, but still a Division I school. The University of Minnesota was okay with the move, but the transfer had to be approved by the NCAA. They were actually uh, a pleasure to work with. I, I told them of our desire to make sure we were in complete compliance with all the rules. Um, there was never any ambiguity or misunderstanding about what the, what the process was and what the steps were to get to where we are now. And we followed that process and um, they were just uh, very accommodating and, and we, we couldn't be more pleased with the way things went. Paul moved closer to his family and transferred to the University of Illinois Chicago. Shortly thereafter, the Flames hired a new coach, Chicago native Howard Moore. Coach Moore vividly remembers the first time he met Paul Carter. He was an assistant at Wisconsin and Paul's Minnesota team had just beaten his Badgers. The thing that stands out was uh, they had a great win in our place. Uh, you know, and Paul had an unbelievable block to secure the win for them in overtime. And, uh, and in the handshake line, I remember going down the line and, you know, just kind of being a little upset. And then the kid that made the great play, Paul Carter, uh, looked me right in my eye and say, Coach, great game, God bless you, and said it sincerely. And so that's something that really stuck out of my mind. Like, you know, even though I was upset, I'm like, that's a good kid. That spring, the doctors had more bad news for Bria. We went to the meeting with the orthopedic surgeon and he was telling us that the chemo had not really worked. 
and instead of having to remove the tumor and the bone that had the tumor, they would have to do an amputation. I was shocked, I couldn't say anything. I was trying to hold my tears, I didn't really want to cry that time. Because I had two options, I could keep my leg and continue to do chemotherapy for years and years, or I could just get it removed and be done with chemotherapy by the end of this year. So I just, from thinking that, I thought, well, I think it's time. And also, if I had kept my leg, it most likely I wouldn't have been able to sit here right now and say that I have survived cancer. You know, when, when we told her the news, she was just like, all right, let's get it done. Like, <laughs> I'm ready to get out and about. I'm ready to be cancer free. I'm tired of this. Like, I don't care, take my leg. And I was just amazed. I was like, are you serious? She was just like, yeah, I don't care. Like, it doesn't matter. I'll get a, I'll get a prosthetic and I'll be fine. So I was just like, wow, this kid's tough. You know, once she got it, we, we couldn't stop her, you know. My dad, uh, her mom, everybody else was trying to tell her, like, take your time, you know. She's like, no, I'm fine. And she's like wobbling and we're all nervous, like, oh my God, like, don't fall. But she's like, no, I got this, like, I'm out of here, see you. Like, she's right outside, she's got her leg, she's gone. So, she was fine, she didn't need any help. She, and now she, you know, she's a pro at it. That there is a lot of love in the Carter family is unmistakable. That and a deep faith helped get them through the past year. There's a lot of crazy things going on in this world, but to see so many people express concern and support for us was pretty amazing. And many of those folks were complete strangers. Mm -hmm. So um, in, in that sense, it was not really a test of faith, but a confirmation of faith. And I, I don't know that there's ever been a day that our family has been any closer than we are now. Bria's story and her situation has, uh, has just helped me take it to another level and um, not worry about the little things or worry about what the future holds. For me, it's like, dude, just enjoy every day. When you get out there and you play, smile a little bit, laugh, it's fun, it's basketball. Yeah, you're a fierce competitor, but you don't have to be mean all the time. And uh, just in enjoy, you know, the pains. If you go one for 45, just be happy that you're able to walk on the court when your sister has to limp down the stairs just to get to the game. Thanks, Paul, and good luck to you this season and to your sister, Bria. And thanks to NCAA On Campus for visiting University of Illinois at Chicago. That's all for this week's NCAA On Campus. Thanks for watching. Check us out every week, and remember to make the most of your time on campus.